Hello students, welcome to APJ Patashala. I am Dr. Krishna Kishore Rainam Pudi. I am an assistant professor from Ames Biophysics Department. Today we are going to discuss about a module in silico protein design and protein engineering from a bioinformatics paper. So students, let us see what we are going to learn in this module. So introduction to the various protein design methods and uh, directed evolution various rational protein design methods and uh, how researchers are designing proteins for the novel functions. So protein design is a prediction of amino acid sequence that can be folded as a specific three-dimensional structure and can perform a novel or desired function. The proteins can be designed from novel amino acid sequences or can use existing protein fold. Directed evolution and rational designs are the two major approaches to design new proteins with the novel functions or behavior. What is a protein? Proteins are heteropolymers of amino acids. They are made up of with L-alpha amino acids. There are 20 natural amino acids. So each amino acid has a chiral carbon. To the chiral carbon, there is a carboxylic group and amino group one hydrogen and a side chain. So when two amino acids come together, the H2O will eliminate from two amino acids and the peptide bond forms. This is called the amide bond. What do proteins do? So they do various functions in the living cells. Proteins are molecular machines of the cell. It's a small machine which does a lot of things in our body. So protein receptors are responsible for all the senses. And proteins catalyze the chemical reactions. Muscles are primarily composed of proteins that combine structural and enzymatic parts to make a machine. Where do proteins come from? So DNA is the blueprint for proteins that we all know. The genome contains instruction for every protein in the living cell. Each gene is the code for one protein or one polypeptide chain. Genes are expressed through an intermediate molecule called mRNA in the process of transcription. So this transcription eventually get to translated in the outside of the nucleus at the ribosomes and the proteins will be synthesized. Protein synthesis. How does the protein synthesis will take place in the cell? It involves two major processes. One is the transcription and the second one is the translation. In the transcription process, the copying of the genetic message DNA into a molecule of mRNA using the RNA polymerases. Once the mRNA forms, it comes out from the nucleus and uh, it reaches the ribosomes. At the ribosomes, using the different translation machinery, the mRNA will translate it into the polypeptide chains or proteins. The proteins will come out of the ribosome and it folds into a different structures and uh, it can act as a, a molecular machine. How does a protein look like? See in this picture, the protein looks like this is a cotton picture of a protein called azurin, which is the electron transfer protein. So it has a different uh, secondary structures, helis and uh, beta sheets, loops, different kind of secondary structural elements. All these things will come together and uh, they can fold it three-dimensional structure and uh, in the second picture we can see how the side chains are coming out from the backbone and all hydrophobic nature side chains will be in the core of the protein and the charged residues will be exposed to the solvent. Each amino acid has a side chain that protrudes from the backbone. In this slide you can see in the second picture this is the just backbone of the, the protein. You can see various functional groups of amino acids that are spread over the three-dimensional structure of the protein. How do proteins work? So proteins work through a unique three structure. When uh, the translation happens in the cell, protein fold into unique three-dimensional structure. Each kind of protein will fold into a three-dimensional structure. So the 3D structure mainly depends on the amino acid sequence. So the function of your protein is controlled by the 3D structure. In this slide, you can see a native protein of 
adenylate kinase domain. So this adenylate kinase function is it takes one ATP and one AMP and it converts to two ADP molecules. So basically in the cell it maintains the ATP AMP and ADP concentrations in a proper way. So you can see in the second picture the red ball and stick model that that is the AMP and ATP molecules. So it has a two catalytic binding sites and it act as a catalyst to change ATP AMP to two ADP molecules. So why and how do proteins evolve? So proteins evolve through the physiological requirement of a cell under positive selection. Proteins have evolved over a period of operating under physiological conditions through positive selection. In the process of evolution, the simple mutation and recombination have generated novel proteins to have new structures and novel functions. So why do we need to design the proteins? So to accomplish novel desired functions through the proteins means Naturally occurring proteins are not very suitable for industrial applications or they will take very long time to evolve in the nature by. So you may not have an enzyme of your interest through the natural evolution. So you can design proteins of your own interest by doing the protein design. So there are uh, two major methods in the protein design. One is the a natural and uh, the second one is the rational. In the natural protein design method, we have a directed evolution. The directed evolution mimics the process of natural selection to evolve proteins towards desired goal in the laboratory conditions. That means, under uh, the rational design, these methods are an alternative of directed evolution and they potentially be used to obtain useful information from protein sequences and structures that can guide us to make protein design more efficiently. The directed evolution. This is the first method to design the protein. It mimics the nature selection. That means scientists take the inspiration from the nature how to design the proteins. So in this method, first we take the a gene which codes a parent protein. We take that protein gene and uh, we do the mutations using error prone PCR, DNA shuffling, DNA recombination, different techniques we use and uh, we generate the library, the gene library. All this gene library will be translated into a protein. So in this protein library, you will have so many numbers. So after getting these proteins, we need to select which protein is the functional one or whatever we are going to try the design the protein we need to select a functional protein from this protein pool so which is really tough one so for this one we do the screening we select the proteins which are the a functional one so non-functional one will be discarded the functional one we go and repeat it again to produce the different libraries so you do this process until you get your functional protein. The rational design methods, these are called knowledge based design. Means direct in the directed evolution, techniques mimic the natural evolution process without using any knowledge of enzyme structure or function. So these rational design methods use information from protein sequence, structure and function that can guide us to make protein design more efficient. So computational methods provide an invaluable tool for the evolutionary design of proteins. Rational design methods. So in these methods, we use the knowledge about the protein. So what kind of amino acids are there? What kind of 3D structure is there? We thoroughly check the protein sequence and structure and we do this method. So in these rational methods, there are several approaches. Sequence based, structure based, computational protein design and a de novo design. The sequence based means we just take the protein sequence and uh, we analyze the sequence using the multiple sequence alignment and evolutionary trace analysis. And uh, we identify the hotspots on the protein and uh, 
according to the hotspot results we will mutate the hotspots to design a new protein the structure based protein design we use 3d structures and uh, we examine through the molecular visualization softwares and uh, we change the amino acid combinations near to the active site and uh, we do design the proteins in this method the computational protein design is a algorithm based one so we use a different computational protein design programs and uh, according to the computational protein output we synthesize those genes and test for the validation de novo design is a completely new one and uh, this one is also very closely related to the computational protein design in this method also we use different computational uh, calculations so in detail i explain in the next slides in the rational design methods one of the method is a sequence based protein design so what is the sequence based protein design so we know that all the proteins will have different amino acid sequences so each kind of protein will have a particular amino acid sequence so using the multiple sequence alignment and evolutionary trace analysis tools we can explore the amino acid conservation and their family relationship among groups of structural and homologous protein sequences so researchers will identify the critical spots hot spots to assess the amino acid variability and guide the consensus design how they are going to be i can explain in my next slide using the multiple sequence alignment in this sequence based protein design as i said earlier here you can see the multiple sequence alignment of uh, different proteins so all the stars indicate the conservation of protein in each protein wherever the dots are two dots are the varying amino acids so those are called the hot spots of the protein so you particularly you focus on that area and you will change the mutations to get whatever your desired function is it might be the stability for the protein or you might be trying for the improvement of catalysis of that particular protein so a structure based protein design as i said in my earlier uh, slide that uh, you will use the computational programs visualization softwares to see and examine protein 3d structure for example in this slide you can see that this protein is taking these two molecules and uh, one keto group is going to change on amino group this is a, a diabetic drug so we cannot synthesize easily by using the chemical synthesis so in this case we do use the the protein so that protein is not existing naturally so what we do we take a protein which is already existing in the nature so in the first picture you can see it so which is not accommodating one of your substrate so according to your sub substrate you do the mutations you can see the red spots there you do the mutations and uh, it can accommodate the the substrate in the second step after making this one you need to optimize this protein for the catalysis so the optimization most of the people are using the direct evolution in this particular work which is published in science they have done initially the structure based enzyme design then after eventually they have done the direct evolution to optimize the dimerization in the rational design methods there are uh, computational protein design and de novo design methods are the other methods methods we use for the protein design so recent advances in computational protein design algorithms have made in silico modeling a highly promising strategy for the designing of novel protein designs so the computational methods can effectively estimate the energetics of amino acid variations at a specific position on the overall protein structure through the or rotamer libraries and uh, backbone reorganization what is the protein structure prediction you people might have known that protein will have a particular sequence so far in the protein data bank which all the protein structures will be deposited in that protein data bank so in that protein data bank you can see all the protein 3d structures so what about not solved crystal structures so whenever you have the protein sequence sometimes 
it is not possible to crystallize and see the three dimensional structure so in that case what you do you take the protein sequence and do the computational calculations and predict the 3d structure so you're going from sequence space to the structure base this is called the protein structure or protein modeling so what is the protein design this is the exactly opposite problem of the protein prediction that means you know what kind of 3d structure is you need to predict what kind of sequence that can fold into the 3d structure so this is more problematic than the, the protein prediction method what is a successful protein design the design sequence which folds to the correct target structure can be considered a, a successful design means you want to design a, a protein which is having a particular 3d structure then you don't know the sequence so what you need to do is you need to predict the correct sequence which can fold into that particular 3d structure when you design a protein in a particular sequence if it folds your target structure it can be called as a successful protein design choosing a backbone fold for a computational protein design input so it is mainly based on the target protein that means the sequence dictates the structure and the structure dictates the function and a crucial part of structure is protein fold we still don't know how to choose the best fold instead we borrow from nature and redesign a natural protein to do something new it's a novel function the main steps in computational protein design so the total energy describes the fitness of a structure of any molecule in the nature so in the computational protein design what you need first you need a protein coordinates which you can download it from protein data bank and uh, you do different computational uh, calculations for example you use some uh, terms like van der waals hydrogen bonding hydrophobic electrostatic interactions different terms you will use and uh, from that one you get some output and uh, you synthesize that output as a dna and uh, you express that one and uh, you get the protein and uh, validate that protein so the main things that you need to take care when you are doing the computational protein design so many things to be considered to achieve a successful protein design and even if you take all these precautions there is no guarantee that you can make you can achieve goal but anyway we are trying so in the computational protein design there are protein backbones which you are taking as input very important it based on your target function and uh, the rotomer library so the rotomer library is uh, protein side chains that are extracted from the protein data bank these all are the the minimal conformational energy of each amino acid so you need to have a, a good rotomer library and uh, the force fields atom based force fields you need to include these force fields into the computational program to calculate the energy functions and the computational optimization algorithms which is uh, very very important there are different kind of uh, protein design programs like orbit rosetta and different different things and the final thing is the negative design what is a negative design for example in a simple example if you want to go from north to south for example delhi to hyderabad so you need to go only in the south direction you cannot go any east direction or west direction or even north direction so you tell the computer program you don't take this three three direction only take the south direction so this is uh, called the negative design so using the negative design you will approach your target protein design the potential energy of an equation so this kind of potential energy equation you will include in your computational program that means you will have a different components of the energetic terms for example the total energy of the system is equal to van der waals hydrogen bonding electrostatic hydrophobic rotamers everything you will include all these terms to calculate the energy of a particular protein or protein design so how the computational programs will calculate and design the proteins so we have to use a different different uh, 
combinations and terminations of amino acids and their rotomers to design a protein. So we all know that amino acid side chains will have a, a different uh, single bonds which are flexible. So they are able to rotation. So you will have so many rotational bonds in each side chain of the amino acid. So not every conformation comprises the equal energy from each amino acid. So each amino acid has a set of preferred conformations called rotomers. What are the rotomers? Rotomers are minimal energy conformations that are extracted from the, the protein data bank. What is the protein data bank? The protein data bank, all the solved crystal, protein crystals, 3D structures will be deposited in the protein data bank. So from the protein data bank, we check all the amino acid different conformations and we built a library called the rotomer library. So this rotomer library will be useful for the protein design. So we know that we have a 20 amino acids and because of the rotational bonds, we have to have more than 20 amino acid conformations. There are nearly 40, 400 amino acid rotomers approximately. So the total structures for a 30 amino acid length is 400 power 30. This is approximately number of atoms that are existing in the universe. So it is a huge number. So we cannot take all of them. So when you are doing the computational calculations, I am going to talk about the rotomers and rotomer library. If you see this particular example, you can see a glutamate and a arginine. They both are trying to form the a salt bridge. So when CPD is going on, the algorithms will try to put different kind of rotomers from the existing rotomer library of arginine and glutamate. So you can see from each slide that arginine and glutamate are changing their rotomers. Whenever the possible interactions are going to take place, the computational program will fix that one and uh, it will give the energy. So protein core design with the computational protein design. So in this example, you can clearly see that the backbone is in the blue color. That is fixed. So you are trying to design the, the core region. So you can see B, C, D, the tryptophan is having a different kind of rotomers. So the protein partition into design side chains that are allowed to assume multiple rotomers and uh, fixed scaffolds. So whenever it finds a possible good interactions, then CPD put it as a minimum energy confirmation and uh, it gives the scoring. What does it mean for uh, two amino acids in the core of a protein to match? They should fit close together. That means they should not come too close. If they come too close, there will be a steric interactions. So steric repulsions must be there. So you cannot keep them too close. So they should be optimal distance. And uh, neighboring atoms must have complementarity charges. For example, neutral like neutral and positive likes negative. This kind of charges. You need to keep that one. So this is called the electrostatic complementarity. This kind of all terms will be included into the computational algorithm and uh, the scoring function. This computational protein design, this is one best example, which is published in Science in 2010. If you take the upper middle picture, the protein catalytic active site is good for the, the phenyl ring. So we want to design it for uh, arginine or leucine. So according to whatever the target you mentioned, you decide, you need to change or you need to put the mutations to accommodate these particular amino acids. So you can see the red marks that means in that area you will change the amino acid mutations and you can optimize this protein to be arginine or leucine side chain. In the second example B you have a, a substrate which should have some particular loop. So you are doing the loop modeling by Inisilco. So for this one, the computer program will calculate different loops. You can see in the second picture, there are different colors of loops are there. 
So whatever the best loop having this uh, side chain will be the, the minimum energy possible one and uh, you will have a good interaction between the side chain and the, the substrate. So the computational program will optimize your desired function in this way and will give the output. So you take this output and you synthesize and you validate in the experimental characterization. So this is another good example for the, the thermal stabilization. For example, which is published in 2014, the initial protein is having Tm that is called the, the melting temperature of your protein which is at 47 degrees centigrade. So by doing the core design, we can see those five uh, different ball models. So we choose hotspots from the sequence data or structural data and you design around those amino acid residues. So in the second picture, you can see that the different mutations you have done to design the core for the thermal stability. So in this example, they have achieved from 47 to 71 degrees centigrade. That means the protein is even stable at 71 degree centigrade and which is functional. So in this kind of work, you can uh, produce the very good uh, stable enzymes which are very apt for the industrial purposes. That means the different hard conditions like high temperature, this kind of designs will be useful and uh, it is functional at 71 degree centigrade. But computational protein design made our job easy. We don't have to use that much enormous number. So what are the, the main steps there in the de novo protein design? It relies on the introduction of amino acid residues essential for the catalysis into the existing protein backbone. So the transition state of the reaction and the ideal active site geometry is modeled using quantum mechanical calculations. So then protein backbone is searched for the searched to identify potential binding pockets that blindly trade the transition state and retain the desired geometry of the specific functional groups of the catalytic site. So this is one of the success story from the de novo proto design is for designing a novel protein inhibitors to target stem region of influenza hemagglutinin. And the result from this work suggests that de novo computational design antiviral proteins are possible. So in this work, first David Baker group has initially taken the epitope of influenza hemagglutinin and they have identified the hotspot region and they have searched for the hotspots on the epitope region. After hotspot library design, they have searched for the shape complementarity scaffolds from the protein data bank. Using the low resolution docking and minimization with the hotspot restraints, they have they were trying to mix this hotspot region and uh, shape complementarity scaffold. So in the next step, they incorporate this hotspot residues onto the, the scaffold. And uh, finally, they have designed the scaffold residues outside the hotspot through the docking studies. And finally, they got some output. So the output, they were synthesized and uh, expressed the protein for the experimental calculation, experimental validation. This is another success story of the de novo protein design. So for this one, quantum mechanical and molecular dynamic calculation as well as different machine learning al algorithms have become helpful tools to effectively explore the effect of amino acid perturbations in the novel protein designs. Altogether, these different concepts of offer promising predictors for the altering protein functions such as substrate specificity, stereo selectivity and stability by the enzyme redesign and designing antibodies for targeted proteins as well as the creation of new functions by the new de novo design. The idea is that enzymes enhance chemical reactions by lowering activation energy by stabilizing the transition state. Transition state of the substrate interacts with active site residues of the protein through various non-covalent interactions. In this methodology, Quantum mechanical calculations will be used to calculate the interaction energy of the substrate transition state 
and the surrounding residues of the active site. From these calculations, the ideal active site geometry of the protein active site residues will be modeled or modified. Then search for the protein backbone library for the available protein database, which promotes holding the designed amino acids favorable geometry in complex with the transition state. And the next step, the transition states will be optimized with the desired functional groups of different amino acid combinations. Finally, the rest of the residues of active site for tight binding of the transition state are designed and are ranked on the basis of binding energy and catalytic geometry. After doing the calculations, you will synthesize the gene and uh, translate the protein and do the experimental characterization for the desired function. So students, let us summarize what we have learned in this module. The computational protein design is able to rationally engineer any function into a given scaffold. The ability to design novel protein folds, conformations and enzymatic activities offers enormous potential for the development of new protein therapeutics and biocatalysts. The progress in rational enzyme engineering and de novo enzyme design in recent years provide researchers with powerful and effective new strategies to manipulate for the biocatalysis. The use of in silico methods allow the creation of predictive frameworks for hypothesis driven protein design that can, that can considerably reduce the complexity of the system and translate into smaller, more focused and functionally rich libraries. Thank you.